Hey everybody, welcome back to Life in Room 27. My name is Miss Robinson and I'm back with another math tutorial video for you guys. Today we're gonna to be looking at lesson 5.2 and in lesson 5.2 we're going to be dividing a decimal by a whole number. And since this is an investigation lesson, we will be using models, so we will not be using an algorithm, which I've taught you guys are the technical steps that you take when solving a math problem. Today we're just gonna be using models. And today I'm gonna be making reference to, um, I think what I've called them in the past is pretending like you have a plate of food or receptacle to help you understand how our models are going to work. So I am going to give you a couple of examples that I hope help you get through your homework tonight or study for a quiz or a test or however you're using this video. And then I'm gonna come back with some closing thoughts and we'll wrap it up. So I'll see you in just a second. All right, here we have our first example. We are dividing the decimal two and four tenths, and we're dividing that by four. The first thing we wanna make sure that we remember is that this is your dividend. Two and four tenths is what is being divided. And then our divisor is four. And in this particular case, when you're dividing a decimal by a whole number, your divisor tells you how many groups are you trying to create out of your dividend. So the first thing that you wanna do once you realize that that's your dividend, that's your divisor, or how many groups you're gonna be creating, you wanna go ahead and model out your dividend. So we're gonna model two and four tenths. So here's one, two, and one, two, three, four tenths. So I've just modeled out my dividend. The next thing that you wanna look at is your divisor again and say, how many groups was I going to be creating out of two and four tenths? And your divisor is four, so you need to create space for four groups. So this is gonna be group one, group two, group three, and group four. Now sometimes when I'm teaching this lesson, I refer to these as groups, I've referred to these as plates, I've referred to these as receptacles, but it's just these are the four groups and this is based on the fact that your divisor was the number four. So once you've created space for each of your four groups, you wanna start taking your dividend and equally placing them into each of these spaces, receptacles, plates, however you wanna to refer to them. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with my tenths, and as I place a piece in each space, I'm gonna make sure that I'm crossing it out as I go along. So I'm gonna put one tenth there, cross it out. One tenth there, cross it out. One tenth there, cross it out, and one tenth there, cross it out. Luckily, that was nice and easy. I had exactly four tenths. I had exactly four spaces to represent my four groups, so I'm done with the tenths. Now, when I look at what's left, I have two holes. I cannot take these two whole pieces and equally just plop them into my four spaces because there's only two of them. But I also know that I can break my holes apart and create two groups of 10 tenths. So now I'm going to cross out this one hole. I'm gonna represent that as 10 tenths. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm gonna do the same with the second hole. I'm gonna cross it out. I'm going to regroup that as 10 tenths. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now I have plenty of pieces to go ahead and finish dividing these out. So again, I'm gonna do it one at a time. I need one, two, three, four. So I'm gonna cross out the four that I just did. One, two, three, four. I still have more left. One, two, three, four. Cross them out. One, two, three, four. I still have more left to distribute and it's more than four, so I'm gonna keep going. One, two, three, four, cross them out. One, two, three, four. Still more, one, two, three, four, cross those out. One, two, three, four. Now, lucky me, I have four left, so I'm gonna go ahead and put those in there. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So now you've equally distributed two and four tenths into four groups, and now you have to interpret, well, what is this telling me my quotient is, or the answer is? What is two and four tenths divided by four? 
Some students make the mistake of saying, okay, there's one, two, three, four groups. So my answer is four. That's not your answer. These just represent the fact that your divisor was four. The way that you're going to, oh, the other thing some students will do is they will count all the pieces in the groups together and represent that as the answer. That's also the wrong thing to do. What you want to do is look at one of your groups and be certain that you equally distributed all those pieces amongst your groups. And you're just going to count how many pieces are in one group. So there was one, two, three, four, five, six, and these were tenth pieces. So I know then that two and four tenths divided by four, or if I had two and four tenths of something and I wanted to put them in four groups, each group would have a total of six tenths. That would be my quotient to two and four tenths divided by four. There's four groups here, and each of these groups have six tenths inside of them. So that would be your answer. All right, this next example is a little bit more challenging just because you're dealing with a larger decimal. So now we have three and 21 hundredths divided by three. So I've already modeled three and 21 hundredths for you. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, I've modeled my dividend. My divisor is three. So that tells me I need to create space for three groups. So this is going to be group one, group two, group three. Okay. Now that that's done, you need to start dividing your pieces equally. Now, the nice thing is just by sight, I can see that I have enough ones to put one hole into each group. So I'm going to put one hole there one hole there, one hole there. And I'm gonna cross each of those out because I just used them. Now when I look, I have two tenths left and 100. And that is not enough for me to equally distribute into my three groups. It doesn't really make sense for me to think, oh, I'm gonna take my hundredth and start creating thousandths because I know that I have two tenths and it's gonna be easier for me to take my two tenths and break those down to hundredths. And remembering what we've learned in previous chapters, I know that there are 10 hundredths and one tenth. So I'm gonna cross this tenth out, recreate it as 10 hundredths. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm gonna do the same for the next one. I'm gonna cross out that one tenth, recreate it as 10 hundredths. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, instead of trying to put those two tenth pieces equally amongst these three groups, I have plenty of hundredth pieces that I can now start distributing in my groups. So I'm gonna take my time, do it one at a time, and cross out as I go. So I'm gonna put one, two, three there, cross out one, two, three. I still have more, one, two, three, Cross it out, one, two, three. Keep going, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three. Still some more, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three. Down to the last three, one, two, three. One, two, three. So I have now successfully distributed three and 21 hundredths into three groups by using some regrouping to help me out. Now I need to look at just one of my groups and figure out, well, how much is in each group? If I have three and 21 hundredths stickers and I want to give them to three friends, how many stickers is each friend gonna get? This is friend one, friend two, friend three. If you wanna look at it like that. So I know that this is one whole, there are no tenths, so it's gonna be one whole and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven hundredths. So the quotient to three and 21 hundredths divided by three, it's gonna be one whole, no tenths, and seven hundredths. And that would be my quotient to that particular example. So those are your two examples. Just remember to take your time, make your groups, make sure you know what the dividend is, how to model that, and what your divisor is. So I'm gonna flip the camera back around and I'll be right back with you with some closing thoughts. 
So those were examples for lesson 5.2. Just a few things to remember as you get ready to do your homework or when you're doing problems like this is the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna make sure that you model your dividend. So whatever the number is that's being divided or whatever the decimal is that's being divided, you wanna model that first using your place value pictures that we've used in previous chapters. The second thing you're gonna look at is your divisor and your divisor tells you how many spaces you need to create, how many plates you need to use, how many receptacles you're putting these things in however you choose to look at it and then if you need to break apart some pieces to evenly distribute them amongst your groups then you're going to go ahead and break apart those pieces which we've done in the past when we were dealing with adding and subtracting decimals so i hope as always that those examples were helpful to you if you're a parent i especially hope that you found these videos or this particular video helpful as always if you liked it please give it a thumbs up um, and make sure you tell your friends about it so they have these videos to look at too. So I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I will see you in the next video. Bye everybody.